Hey, welcome folks. This is Bob from Bob's Plumbing Videos. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to remove this nut off this strainer. Let me get this up here so you can see it better. I don't know if you've ever attempted to remove a basket strainer from your kitchen sink. Well, you're going to discover shortly that that white metal die cast nut is not going to come off no matter what kind of tool you purchase. In this video, I'm going to show you my techniques on how to cut it off without destroying the sink. So if you're new to the channel, I highly recommend you subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll be notified of when I post a new video. Now let's get into this video. All right, so here we are to take a look at some of the available tools out there on the market to remove the old basket strainers. And I have to admit to you, I have used most of them. And in my opinion, most of them don't work or basically are inferior made. So I don't use them. The only two I do use and still hang on to are the two in the middle there with the green check marks. Those are to hold back the strainer as I'm attempting to remove the nut. Now, in 99% of the cases I've been on, those white metal nuts with the notches in them are basically welded on there because they've been on there for so long and they're just made out of a die cast metal and they just will not budge. Now you can attempt to hold back the strainer, go in there with one of these tools and back off the nut, but my experience is those nuts will not come off. I've even tried it with a 14 inch wrench, even an 18 inch wrench, and when those nuts get welded on, they are welded on. So when that happens, it's time to break out the saw. Now it could be a hacksaw, it could be a reciprocating saw, it could be a multi-tool with a very fine tooth blade in it. But at any rate, these things generally do not come off by hand. And with that in mind, let's jump down on the bench and I'll show you how I remove these nuts. All right, so what we're looking to accomplish is to getting this nut off. And I'm gonna I'm gonna move the camera, I'll give you a better close-up of this nut. But these things have typically been in there for a number of years, and you go to put a wrench on it, or you go to put one of those nifty tools I showed you in the screencast on here, and you soon come to discover that this nut is not gonna budge. Uh, you know, you can put a strainer hold back tool in here uh, to hold the strainer while you attempt to take this nut off counterclockwise, but I can tell you more often than not, 99% of the time, this nut is frozen on here and the only way to get it off is to cut it off. Yes, I agree with you. I'm showing you this on top of the tabletop, which means it's probably gonna be easier to do than if you're actually doing it in a, in a live situation where you're under the sink, doing it upside down, but it is what it is. And this is the way things go and you may have to get on your back, you may have to, you know, make room, you may scrape your knuckles, you may, uh, you know, bang your head under the kitchen cabinet, but hey, welcome to my world. Let me move this camera, I'll give you a, a close-up of this nut. All right, so what we're looking to accomplish is to get this nut off here. And we have to do that by slicing it, cutting it with a hacksaw, with a sawzall, with a multi-tool. Lately, my tool of choice is a multi-tool. It seems to work the best without marring up the sink. Or, or chancing destroying anything. So this is what the goal is to get. All right, so once you get all those fancy schmancy tools and you try to re re remove this lock nut and you go in there and you put your uh, fancy uh, strainer tool holder in there. In my case, this is my fancy tool. It's a pair of pliers and a screwdriver. And then I come in here with my pipe wrench and I'll try to latch onto these notches and you want to hold back this thing here. And after you're killing yourself and you're under there realizing this thing ain't coming off, now I'll show you how to get it off. Uh, you could give it the old high school try. Uh, I'm not one to say don't try it. But after you finish killing yourself, let's move to the next segment and I'll show you how to get it off with the least amount of aggravation. All right, I would say the first technique, which I've used long before power tools came along, and it's probably the easiest one out of all of them I'm about to show you, is to get yourself a good sturdy hacksaw. I generally, as a rule, my rule of thumb hacksaw blade is 24 teeth per inch. You could use a blade with 32 teeth per inch. It's a little finer cut. It'll take you a little longer to get through and you will cut upside down because you're going to be sitting down and this strain is going to be the other way. You cut straight down 
until you puncture the lock nut on each side. So you basically are going to cut through the strainer straight down, nice, easy, even, slow strokes, right through this nut, right through the bottom flange area of the nut, and you're going to do this without cutting through the sink. So when you get down to the flat of this nut, you are going to check, look, make sure. And when you have the flange or the flat of this nut, I would say probably scored through three quarters of the way, not all the way. At that point, you can come and with a screwdriver or a chisel, a very fine chisel, you can very easily pop the nut. Now, if you want to put it through on the, on, the, on the vertical parts of the nut, that's fine. You stick the screwdriver in there, and then you pop it. This nut will pop off in two pieces. This strainer will come out. That, in my opinion, is the easiest way to go about this. Uh, yes, you're going to be doing it upside down, but that's just the way it is. These, these strainers are basically garbage, so the cutting should go pretty easy. Use a brand new blade. The blades are cheap enough. But in my opinion, the most economical and quickest way to do this is to cut straight down with a hacksaw. Cut this nut. Pop this nut in two halves. You're done. The job is finished. Now let's move to the next technique. All right, the next technique similar to the first technique, if you don't want to cut all the way through the strainer, you could start on the corner of a strainer, right end, left end, I don't know if you guys are left-handed or right-handed, and you could start to cut through the strainer here. You could cut through it here, you could start on an angle, and eventually you'll cut straight down. It's the same idea, you want to cut through this nut twice. And you want to keep the hacksaw as straight as you can. If you start doing this, you're probably going to hit the back of the sink before the blade has a chance to go through the nut. If you do this, the blade's going to hit the sink before you get a chance to go through the nut. So you have to be absolutely flush, if you will, or completely horizontal. You cut completely down through the strainer. The teeth are eventually going to go through this lock nut on both sides. Again, you're going to go until you start to score the flat side. Now you want to score it pretty well all the way through, but some of these nuts, to be honest with you, are so corroded that you could make a single cut here. Once you have these cuts in here, then you'll come in here with your uh, tool. And I use this, uh, this Milwaukee, uh, it's kind of like a demolition screwdriver. Once you get that notch in there, you can come in here and then you could you could twist this and pop the nut. If you have to, you can come in here with a hammer if you want to hit it and hit the notches that you made with the hacksaw and this nut should come off. Now if you're having trouble getting it to pop, you may have to go further down through the flat over here, but the trick is not to cut into the sink. This is imperative that you don't cut into the sink. So with that, let's move to the next uh, little technique I use if neither of the previous two work. All right, moving along, third technique. Uh, I discovered this a long time ago, this Lennox. It's a mini hacksaw. It's got like, uh, God, I think, I think it's 32 teeth per inch, but it's a very fine, very fine tooth blade. And this gives me some options because I have a lot more room. And what I'll do is I'll come in here, and, and this you're able to go on an angle a little better. And as you get in there, you start slicing down. I'm not really going through the strainer. I'm looking to get right through the nut. Right here, I'm cutting through this nut. And sometimes I'll make an X pattern. I'll go all the way down until I hit the flat. Then I'll come in from the other side. I'll make an X pattern, if you will. Excuse my hand here. I'll make an X pattern in this nut. So I have a crisscross in the nut. And again, I try to get it through the flat of the nut as much as I can. And after I am down as far as I can, I will even sometimes get this little screwdriver in here and pop it in between the, uh, the lock nut and hit it. Now you have to be careful. Some stainless steel sinks are, are cheap as hell and you could chance denting the sink. So I always like to See if I could get completely through the vertical and the flat portion of this lock nut completely or almost completely. 
and then it's just a simply a matter of coming in with the screwdriver and you can pop the nut and the nut will pop off. Trust me, it will. All right, so for those of you who are a little bit more experienced with power tools, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna show you what I have done on occasion. I have gone out and get my reciprocating saw and I've made a uh, plunge cut, if you will, through the strainer, right down. We're gonna go down through that nut and we are going to stop short of actually penetrating the flat portion of the nut because we don't want to uh, nick the sink. What I try to do is I get a 12 inch blade with maybe 24 teeth per inch and very, very carefully and very, very slowly from outside the cabinet, I, I make this cut. And after I make this cut, I will come in and get my tool here and I will come in and I will pop the nut off. Now I don't advocate a homeowner or a DIYer doing this with a reciprocating saw because it doesn't take much for you to destroy the sink. So with that said, let's move on to the next method of doing this with a power tool. All right, so the next method with a power tool, and if you're a DIY guy, I'm sure you own one of these, but these tools come in really handy, but it's a Dremel tool. A Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel Again, like the previous methods I will come in here, what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to I'm looking to cut this nut here. I'll make a plunge cut into the nut, straight into the nut. Now I can do it from either side, either from the from the left side, or I can swing it around here on the right side, and I'm gonna make a plunge cut, if you will, and I'm just gonna make it through that white metal nut and once I got my slots made in that white metal nut again I will come up with my tool here and I will pop that off and I think this is probably going to be the least evasive way of doing it with a power tool you get a nice cutoff wheel you come in here nice and easy and you can adjust the speed on your Dremel tool it's an adjustable speed tool so variable speed you don't have to go crazy in terms of uh, speed but I think if you're a novice uh, and you don't have experience with either a reciprocating saw or a multi-tool, which is what we're going to look at next, I think this is a great alternative to using a hacksaw. All right, guys, and don't forget, this is a bulletin. You're going to be doing it this way with the sink installed. So you're actually going to be working upside down. Keep that in mind. What I'm showing you here is on the bench. I'm showing you technique. But this all has to be done while you're sitting on the floor and you're reaching inside the cabinet. So keep that in mind. The orientation of the strainer is going to be the way you're looking at it in this frame. Keep that in mind. Let's move on to my multi-tool demonstration of how I cut that nut off. All right, and if I'm going to use a power tool in today's world, my choice is a multi-tool. A multi-tool with a titanium blade on here and I am going to come in from the side generally. Sometimes I'll do it from the top up but I come in from the side and I make a plunge cut right through the nut. I prefer to do it from the side but sometimes I don't have the room. The tool won't make it in between the strainer and the cabinet. If that's the case I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make a plunge cut straight down. And I'm going to do that on both sides. You make a cut here, go straight down to the flat. Try to get as far through the flat as you can without getting through to the sink. If I have the room, I'll do it from the side. Sometimes I'll do it from the front of the cabinet. Sometimes I'll do it, I'll do just one cut. I'll make that cut all the way through to the back of this lock nut here. Once I have those cuts made, I'm going to come in here with my screwdriver and I'm simply going to pop that nut. Now you can make one cut, you don't have to make two cuts because these nuts usually are so rotten that they'll just pop right apart. And once, once you twist it and starts to open up, you'll be able to put your screwdriver in here and you can literally pry it, pry it all around. Now, as far as power tools go, this would be uh, the way I would attempt to do it if you have a, a multi-tool like this. The reciprocating saw method I just showed you to show you what I do sometimes if I'm in a hurry, but I don't advocate you doing this as a homeowner unless you have really, really good experience in using a reciprocating saw because it doesn't take much for that saw. If that blade goes through the strainer and those teeth grab, you're going to destroy the sink. 
So that being said, let me just flip this over now and I'll show you the strainer of choice that I use when taking these pieces of garbage out. So in summary, guys, when you get these sinks, they come supplied with these, these crappy strainers. These, there's no other way to put it. It's a crappy strainer with these crappy nuts. You know what I say to do with these stupid things here? Just chuck them. You want to go out and get yourself a nice deep dish strainer here with a brass coupling nut and a brass lock nut. This is a heavy duty strainer. This nut being brass will come off whenever you need it to come off. This brass coupling nut here is going to connect the tubing from your sink. It'll come off whenever you need it to come off. Now they do make these with those crappy die cast nuts. I would recommend you find yourself a good quality deep dish strainer, such as this one here. With brass nuts, you're going to be good to go. You won't have a problem. I get these from a company called Wolverine Brass. Uh, I will leave some links in the description box down below this video. I hope you get some useful tips on uh, how to go about taking that strainer off without destroying your sink. And uh, that's it, guys. So uh, I look forward to seeing you real soon. Oops, and before I forget, one more tip, guys. I often go in and I find these strainers installed in sinks with a gasket around them like this. Okay? This is a no-no. Plumber's putty, a bead of plumber's putty around here. You get a nice round of plumber's putty. You install it on the flange of the strainer. The strainer gets set down inside the sink. On the other end, on the bottom, first thing to go in is the rubber gasket. Then the deep dish, followed by the lock nut. I just wanted to make you aware of that because I often go in on uh, kitchen sinks and I find that rubber gasket on top of the sink. This rubber gasket belongs under the sink, doesn't belong on top of the sink. So keep that in mind. All right, and for those of you who are not quite sure how much putty to put on that strainer, I've come up here with a little, uh, little, um, I, I guess uh, example of of what I do I'll take my putty I'll I'll kind of roll it down on the table into a nice little uh, rope if you will and then what I do is, is I, I actually will come in here and I will kind of press it down onto the flange all around and then when I have it kind of flattened out if you will at that point I will take it and I will place it down inside of the sink and if you have any uh, manufacturers uh, identifying uh, letters on there such as you uh, see this one here WB I'll leave that on the bottom I'll set that inside of the sink I'll push down on it then I will commence to tightening the lock nut from the bottom the gasket goes first, the rubber gasket, then the basket, then the lock nut, and you're going to be good to go, guys. And then when this all squeezes out, what I do is I, I get a toothpick, a wooden toothpick, and I just scrape off any excess. And just bear in mind that probably for a week or so, you'll see this stuff uh, oozing out around the perimeter of the strainer. You know, the hot water will affect it. And whenever you just see it oozing out along the edge... No big deal, just go get your wooden toothpick. And in a couple of weeks, this will stop uh, expanding and you will be good to go. So there you go, guys. You can see that this can be a real pain in the butt to get out, but with a little care, you can get it off without destroying your sink. And if you're gonna replace this, I highly recommend using a deep dish strainer with brass lock nuts and brass coupling nuts so you'll be able to remove them in the future should the need arise. Folks, I want to thank you as always for stopping by and watching my videos. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll be notified of when I post a new video. Keep an eye out for one of these two videos that are going to pop up here to your right. One of them I chose, one of them YouTube chose. I want to thank you once again, as always, for coming by. Stay well, and until my next video, happy plumbing.